Oh boy, Oppenheimer. Going into this, I had what can be called optimistic skepticism. I was a big fan of Christopher Nolan's work, but was psychologically destroyed by Tenet that I was a little worried that an autobiographical style of film might prove too much information overload for my little monkey brain to handle. So I went in, focused, and sat in my seat, almost bracing myself mentally to try and absorb everything. And what I saw was, wow. For anyone who's not aware, Oppenheimer is the latest film by the critically acclaimed director Christopher Nolan that tells the story of J. Robert Oppenheimer, the inventor of the atomic bomb and how the creation of this world-changing device affects a person and the people around them. Let's get this out of the way, you will have to be in a certain mindset to watch this movie. You have to be prepared to sit there and literally watch a man's life go right by you. I get the same feeling whenever I watch Forrest Gump where by the end of it you really do feel like you just witness a person's life beginning to end. On the onset, the movie immediately feels huge. We're quickly met with massive views of the desert, magnificent structures, fields, we're hopping back and forth throughout time, we're meeting characters left and right, and it was honestly ambitious, but I already started to feel a little overwhelmed, which immediately gave me flashbacks of Tenet. But thankfully, after the film finishes introducing all the characters, we finally get to slow down a little bit and just get to know more about Oppenheimer the man, his dreams, his motivations, his struggles. And the film looks gorgeous. I don't know what it is about Nolan films, but the man can really make a shot of a landscape really breathtaking. I particularly like the scenes where Oppenheimer is dreaming about physics and we get to see quick shots of what I can only describe as the elements. We get to see shots of strobes of light, electricity, fire, particles. It was just beautiful to watch. Another thing that was really effective was Nolan's usage of light and sound. During the scene with the Trinity test when the scientists are about to detonate the bomb, we get to see these two aspects in full display. When the bomb goes off, it doesn't go off in your usual Hollywood explosion. Instead, what Nolan does is that he just blankets the screen with blinding white light and then the delayed boom from the explosion honestly knocked me off balance a little bit. The sheer awe and wonder you first feel when the bomb goes off followed by that dread and weight. I almost can't explain it, it's both beautiful and haunting at the same time. Also in terms of performances, my goodness, Killian Murphy. Everybody's already said it, but man is this guy great in this role. He plays a very nuanced yet subdued character. Rarely does Oppenheimer in the movie get angry, nor does he actually even show himself getting emotionally rattled. He's sort of always cruising in this state of calm and collectedness. But when we get to those close-ups, you really see the hidden torment this character is going through just from his eyes. Robert Downey Jr. was also great in the movie with his skeeving portrayal of Louis Strauss. My favorite performance was actually Matt Damon as this army general. I guess why I gravitated towards him was because every other character in the movie had an agenda or some sort of secret motive that they were basing their actions off of. Matt Damon's character doesn't really have any of that, he's just following orders and we get to just see him react to stuff happening around him. We also got good performances from the likes of Emily Blunt, Rami Malek, Florence Pugh. Although Florence Pugh, I honestly don't know why she had to be in the film. In the grand scheme of things, her character doesn't really serve any big purpose and apart from one scene where Oppenheimer grieves her death, her character doesn't seem to influence him in any other significant way. Maybe I'm wrong but she didn't leave an impact on me whatsoever. Whatsoever. And also I will say that the film has two weaknesses. Number one, by the end of the three hours, I didn't feel like I got to know Oppenheimer as intimately as I should have. There was a lot happening but it felt like a lot more screen time was dedicated to telling the events of the story rather than exploring more on the psychological battle that the man behind it was going through. And number two, the third act, though vital, did not reach the heights of anticipation and excitement the first half of the movie provided with the build up to the bomb and it was also the only part of the movie where I really did start to feel the runtime drag on a little bit. But despite all that, I left the cinema able to comprehend what I just watched and being able to string together the major beats of the story into one cohesive narrative. Even now, two days after having finally seen the film, I'm still thinking about its themes, its message, the ramifications of this potentially world-ending event. The film surfaced in me this sense of dread for our world and it even made me think back to how just a couple of years ago our world was 
in real danger of nuclear warfare. But all in all, this was an excellent film, not for everyone though, I should say that. But if you are in the right mindset of wanting to see a whole life play before your eyes, if you're ready to put on your thinking caps and your moral pajamas to really grapple with the issues the film is presenting to you, then I think you're gonna have one hell of a time. Thanks everybody for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace. Thank you.